Hello, I'm Sally from Natural Spa Supplies and Zoe's brought me to another mystery location. In this video we're going to show you how to make milk paint and you can see our experiments on how to achieve different colours, different textures, different finishes and this is my first experiment. All of us from time to time will paint the interior of our houses or objects inside the house. Conventional paints are usually made with petrochemicals and they contain VOCs, volatile organic compounds, and these are highly toxic and they contribute a great deal to climate change. But beyond that, do you really want to coat your house in petrochemicals containing VOCs and plasticizers and create a toxic home that's harmful to your health? But the good news is you can make your own milk paint. It's going to save you money. You can get the exact colour, texture and shade that you like. So let's go make some paint. Gorilla style. The fast way to make it is by buying some quark in a shop, which is curd cheese. Um, need some slate lime and to add body to the paint you will need chalk. I have got the recipe, the full recipe on the blog where you're actually making your own quark, you're making your own curd cheese using milk and lemon. It takes a day to do that. Um, but anyway, I've made some up and brought it out with me. That is my milk paint mix using these simple ingredients. And then I've brought some pigments with me. I've got cassia, henna, green clay, rasool clay, Indian indigo, and the special blue dyers indigo. If you're going to make the paint and not use it all at once, you might consider adding some borax to the paint to help preserve it for a few days. I've also got um, some hemp soap because I'm going to need to clean things afterwards. Plus, I will need to wash my hands. Um, I've bought some sponges um, instead of paint brushes. And these are wonky sponges, so you can get these in the shop um, on our website. I bought a scrubby in case I need to do some serious cleaning. And they're in the shop. And you will need to use gloves when you're handling the paint because it contains the slate lime. And it's a good idea to wear some eye protection as well. You will need to mix the paint uh, quite often because the chalk uh, will settle to the bottom of the bucket. Let's make our first batch. I'll stir the paint so everything comes together. And then we'll add our pigment. This is the cassia. And I, I do find the sponges are the best way of mixing it. I've tried spoons and brushes and various things, but you can get a much better mixture with the sponge. Henna. Green clay. That's all clay. Indian indigo.
and the special Dyer's Blue Indigo. Yeah, I've, I've run through some plant pigments, the henna, the cassia, the Indian indigo, um, two types of clay, and now I'm onto the blue indigo. And it's almost like milk paint is designed to be used with blue indigo, because look at the fantastic coverage just with one coat. To give you some idea about the coverage that the blue indigo gives, this is um, the back of a um, sort of white on board. Uh, so this is hardboard and this has just had two coats and the coverage is pretty good. I mean, I could give it one more coat, but yeah, the indigo is something special. Um, hang on a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Whoa, blackberries. sort of blue, dark blue, like a woad colour. Let's try it on the canvas. Blackberries. Okay, let's try some soil from a molehill. It's certainly got texture. Got some byrony berries here. That's a beautiful colour. Yeah, that one probably takes several layers to build up and luckily I'm wearing gloves because Byron is poisonous. <laughs> so this is just a quick gorilla style starting point but you can obviously take it much further but think about the advantages. It's so much cheaper to make your own milk paint. It's so much better for the environment. Um, you're giving yourself a paint that's breathable um, so it's much better for the um, longevity of your walls and surfaces. And actually, some of these paints will be naturally antimicrobial. I believe um, in the hospitals during the Crimean War, they were adding clays to paints um, so that they could keep the wards more sanitary. And certainly the indigo is known to be very antimicrobial as well. So that's just a kind of a thought that's perhaps relevant to our era. Yep, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video inspiring and we'd love to see your results. So please do tag us in on the social media or email us with your pictures and do please like um, our video and subscribe to our channel and um, see you again next time. <laughs>